vectors. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come in and open IE Tester. And let me resize this for the window. And I'll create a new tab and we're going to view our site in IE7 and then we'll go back to IE6. And if you guys are anything like me, I put IE6 off to the very end because I cringe because depending on how your site looks in IE6 determines whether you're going to have another hour of work or another five minutes of work. So I just hate doing it. It makes me so um, nauseated. All right, so let's look at an IE7. The only thing I see here is you see the secondary, it's a little too close to that triangle. So we're probably, maybe if I had used a full reset file at the beginning, that would compensate for it because I am assuming it's some kind of browser styling that's shifting that up. But other than that, I can't see the whole thing on this small screen, but other than that, it looks pretty good. So let's also, although I am getting this spacing here, hmm, but depending on where I move the mouse, it goes up and down. That might be a discrepancy with IE Tester, so I will also check that on the actual version of IE7. Let's go into IE6 now, though. Either way, that's not a big deal. And let's see what we end up with in this browser. Ah, yuck. So you can immediately see all these problems. Now, luckily, we can fix this very quickly. So if you're, if you're kind of new to web development and you're thinking, what the heck are all these, what's all this gray? And that is how the transparency is interpreted by IE6. If it comes across transparency, it just kind of turns it into a nasty light grayish, which is everything you see here. And then also you can see where is our navigation completely? Um, our secondary navigation, it's gone. Hopefully, luckily we can kind of fix this pretty quickly. So the first thing that I want you to do if you haven't already is do a Google search for unit ping fix. And I think this is just kind of the quickest way. And what it literally does is the JavaScript manually adds the Internet Explorer uh, CSS styling to make the opacity show up. So it's just kind of a nice way your CSS still validates, but you move it all to a JavaScript file. So you're going to click this download now file, and that's going to download the unit ping. So let's click it. And I'll click save file. All right, that's done downloading. So now I'm just going to extract that real quick and bring it into my solution, and you should do the same. So I'm going to pause for just a moment. Okay, so I've gone and extracted that, and this is what it gives me, a unit ping fix folder, and it's going to give me a JavaScript file and a clear.gif. So I'm going to drag those into my solution. Take that, drag it in. I'm going to make sure clear.gif is in my images folder. Yes. It's saying it already exists because I used it previously. And just to keep things clean, let's create a new folder called JS and store our unit pink fix JavaScript file within there. So grab that and drag it into JS. And let's make a reference to it in our main page. So script type equals text slash JavaScript. And um, source equals JS slash unit ping fix. Okay, so that should take care of it. So pretty much adding this in, it's going to find all pings and add that, that transparency. So let's come back to IE and see if I did anything wrong. So we'll go back to IE Tester. Let's do a complete refresh. OK, and you can see there it's it's compensated for us. Now, there are a few things I had to change. Now, I, if you remember, when I added this background image, I had it as bg.jpg. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why in heck would you save it as a JPEG? It really would be best and smallest as a ping. Well, it does have a small bug where if 
applied to background images that are ping, it's going to stretch them out. So if you ever use this file and you see a background image that's stretched out to like 800 pixels, that's why. So sometimes the easiest fix is just move it over to a JPEG and it might be a K or two bigger, but big whoop. Okay, so the only other things we see here is we need to compensate for this spacing that's been screwed up a little bit. And other than that, it should be just fine. So let's create a new CSS file. New CSS, and I'm going to call it ie.css. Okay, and within ie.css, I'm just going to add a few quick stylings. If you remember that main div, it was way too close to our banner. So I'm just going to add a margin top of 1.5 m's. And then also the secondary container secondary. Let me go ahead and add this real quick. Ooh, to be honest, I'm not really liking this text editor. Okay, like what is this container mods binding? How did how did any of this happen? Okay, sorry about that. So container secondary and we are going to set padding top to 3Ms. OK, so let's come back to IE Tester, and I'll explain that a bit more. If you see here, this main diff, it's too close to our banner. We need some spacing. And to be honest, I just haven't spent enough time to figure out exactly why. You might try using a full reset file. And I know some of you are against using conditional style sheets, but I really don't think it's a big deal at all. You know, it, it, I think it's a nice thing that we're even still c compensating for IE6, so I have no problems adding a hack sheet. It's just not a big deal at all to me. So anyways, uh, with the main div, we just added a bit of top margin to push it over. And then also on the sidebar, I added just some top padding to push this navigation down a little bit because it's too close to the top of that triangle. Let's refresh the page again. Whoa, whoops. We've added our IE style sheet, but we actually need to reference it. And we need to put a little more uh, specificity on this ping fix as well, but we'll do that shortly. Don't worry, we're almost done. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will do if um, less than or equal to IE7, then we are going to link to our IE style sheet. So I'm just going to do link, paste that in, and change styles to CSS slash IE. CSS, and I just need to close that out. So I believe that's end if one word like that. Maybe no exclamation point. Okay, I think that takes care of it. And the only other thing I want to check is we don't want to just by default import this JavaScript file. We only want to import it if the user is um, using IE6 or less. So let's do another one. Um, if less than IE7, then import this script file and close that out. Okay, do a quick cleanup. Okay, so now we're saying if the user is accessing the site from IE6 or less, then import the JavaScript file. But we don't want to add all that extra information if it's not necessary. And then the second one says if they are using IE7 or less, then link this style sheet. Come back to a uh, Internet IE tester, refresh it. Okay, and that's added that extra bit of spacing, and the secondary has added that padding at the top, and that's given us this nice layout. So let's go back to Firefox and refresh it to get one final look at what we end up with. Nothing's going to change because we were only targeting IE. And if you look at this in all the browsers, it should look exactly the same. So that's been your screencast of the week, 53 minutes, but hopefully, especially if you're getting started, this will help you a great deal. And feel free, you know, if you saw any mistakes I made, I'm not above um, judgment. So I'm learning from you just as much as you're learning from me. So also, if you guys have requests for uh, future screencasts, I am uh, more than happy to take a look at them because, uh, you know, it, it's hard to think of ideas, but hopefully you enjoyed this. And do me a favor, as I always say, the only payment I'll ever ask from any of you is, you know, maybe leave a comment if you enjoyed it, give it a dig or stumble upon or dzone. And if you haven't already, do me a quick favor and just subscribe to the RSS feed. And that's all I'll ever ask.
actually, one more thing. I am going to ask you one more thing. I am putting a lot of work into the ThemeForced blog. So if you visit blog.themeforced.net, we are updating the site. Let me zoom out. Uh, I update the site every day. We have some great guest articles, like 10 unique examples of RSS feed designs. And I'm also running a daily or every other day, 